What's up guys? Today we're going to be watching some more videos and we're going to be reacting to them. So let's check them out. If you have $50,000 to invest in real estate, my best bet would be buying a multi-unit property as a primary residence and living in one of the units and renting out the others. Okay, so real quick, she's got us buying a property and doing what they affectionately call house hacking, where you're going to purchase a property as a primary residence and you're going to basically use the rest of the property that has available units to lease out in order for you not to have to pay your rent. And we are going to see how she explains this. The reason being is because you really only need three to five percent down. So let's say you have fifty thousand dollars. Five percent of a million dollars is fifty thousand dollars. What she's looking at is saying that you're going to have a small down payment depending on the type of loan that you're going to be utilizing, and you're going to be using that down payment in order for you to get the ability to house hack. Well, she's using enough of a million dollar valuation. That's fair, but there's other parts of the country you can do this for a lot less money. And if you have a VA loan available to you, you can do this for essentially just your closing costs. So I'm excited to see where she goes with this. So you could essentially buy something as high as a million dollars and then you're renting out the other units in the multi-unit and essentially having them pay your mortgage. Of course you have to be approved for that much so it's really gonna depend on how much you are approved for in a loan. Real quick, that, that's a real good point. She's talking about that she's gotta say that you're approved for that amount. I, I like that she said that because that's up to your lender and that's up to the income and your debt to income ratio your other funds, things of that nature, and that's between you and your lender. Um, so I do like the fact that she just threw that in there because she's, she's covering her bases. So far, I'm completely on board with this. But again, you know, we love that strategy and some people call it house hacking is just buying a multi-unit as a primary residence if you're gonna move into one of the units because that off the bat is a great investment. Okay, so house hacking. Great thing, she's giving some real good tips out here. I'm, I'm really liking what she said. Um, overall, the biggest thing to know with house hacking is this is a really good way to start yourself on the property slash investment ladder. So this is helpful because most people don't have the ability to just go out and buy a investment property straight out of the gate. Most people usually have to buy their first property and live in it for a while, get the equity, sell that, then eventually they have some equity where they can go buy another first property for them as a primary residence for their second purchase, right? And then have a second home or a investment property, something of that nature that they have the equity coming. So I really like where she's going with it. Uh, the only thing that I would add here, the only, the only thing I would add to what she's saying is one item as a huge asterisk that she didn't really mention. Okay, there's two parts to it, all right? Part one is closing costs, okay? Closing costs are gonna go into your loan origination, your appraisal, title search, title company fees, basically the bulk of the processing side of the transaction. So if you got $50,000 and you did, in her example, buy a million dollar house, you're, you're gonna have uh, a good bit of other expenses that show up. On average, they're usually between three and a half and four percent of the loan amount of the property. Again, check with your lender because it does vary. But because of that, that could be a rude awakening because four percent of a million dollars is an additional forty thousand dollars. But you can negotiate that. There are ways that you could potentially get the seller to pay for it, and it depends on what you're buying as well as your lender, your interest rate, and a few other things on the lending side of the house. Part B, and the other thing that she didn't really touch on, which I know this is a short video, um, but just for your awareness, the biggest catch you're going to have with doing this is what we find is that the people who are trying to purchase these triplexes, these quadplexes, these multifamily properties that can go with a VA or FHA loan or a you know, primary occupancy conventional loan with that 5% down payment as you mentioned, they are extremely competitive. And let me tell you why. The reason why these units are so competitive is because there are plenty of investors from all over the country and frankly the world that have the ability to come up with these funds to buy something that is on a smaller side 
multifamily because there's two parts of multifamily. So you have part one, which is your triplexes, quadplexes, duplexes, and these are classified as residential multifamily. And then you have commercial multifamily, which is five or more units, okay? So these residential ones, the duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes, you can use a VA or an FHA mortgage on as long as that property in particular qualifies for that particular loan program. And for the commercial stuff, you can't. Those are going to be your standard 20% down payment minimums. You're going to have to get a commercial loan and a commercial lender in order to do this. So that's item one. Item two with that is these residential duplexes, triplexes, quadplexes are in a price point where there is a lot of activity and a lot of interest because of cash flow. So depending on where you're at in the market we're in, you can pick up a quadplex from between 400 and 500,000, which is great. The last quadplex that I personally put an offer on had 17 offers on it because they're just very, very in demand and they're very hard to get your hands on. Okay, of those 17 offers, nine of them were straight cash. And I'm not talking, you know, when, when people say, oh, it's cash up. No, I'm talking that is straight cash, no hard money lender, no nothing. Somebody's got 400 grand, 500 grand sitting around somewhere that they want to just purely cash flow because sometimes these things have rent rolls of 3,600 to 4,200 a month coming in. That, that's a great retirement opportunity right there for some people who want to have some cash flow, bring in a property manager and not really have to deal with a lot. Um, so that's why people do this and that's why they're in demand. So I, I think that she's definitely giving some great advice. She was very, very eloquent about it. Um, and in my personal opinion, I, I think she, she's definitely out there helping people with, with this advice. And, and I would put my stamp of approval on um, somebody coming out with their first time buyer and trying to go this route, especially if they're younger um, or earlier on in their careers and, and they want to make uh, a couple extra dollars every single month by having somebody else pay their mortgage. So because of her helpfulness and everything, I'm going to rate her an 8.5 out of 10 on this advice because it's, it's definitely factual, it's definitely accurate. The only reason why it's not a 10 out of 10 solely is, is because she failed to mention those two items with obtaining this uh, opportunity. Um, the two items being, as I said before, one, you're going to be entering into an extremely competitive space. So because of that, be prepared because that's something that, that you're going to run into if you decide to go this way. And item number two, and more importantly, not touching on the closing cost aspect because you, you can't just do this with $50,000 if you're buying a million dollars. Now, if you have $50,000 down, you can do a lot with that if you're buying at a much lower price point. Um, but using that example, it, it just is unrealistic. So that, that, that's where I stand. But otherwise, great advice. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.